What you guys didn't know was <laughs> Chad didn't get any room. Mm -hmm. He didn't he didn't get anything. He was sleeping on the floor in the family room. Resurfaced videos from disgraced YouTuber Ruby Frankie are now making the rounds, showing what critics call a pattern of abuse that stretches over multiple years. <laughs> you were sleeping on a beanbag. I was sleeping on a beanbag since October. <laughs> videos Frankie herself posted describe her controversial parenting style, like forcing her teenage son to sleep on a beanbag for months or refusing to drop her then six-year-old daughter's lunch off at school. These videos posted years before she was arrested and charged with aggravated child abuse. And hopefully, hopefully nobody gives her food and nobody steps in and gives her a lunch. Both Frankie and her business partner, Jody Hildebrand, were arrested on August 30th after Frankie's 12-year-old son broke free out of duct tape from Hildebrand's home and rushed to a neighbor for help. Nine, I'm on the address of your emergency. Tell me exactly what's happened. I just had a 12-year-old boy show up here at my front door asking for help. It happened in the small community of Ivins, Utah, about four hours south of Salt Lake City. Frankie and Hildebrand's self-help parenting and brands spread farther than just the state of Utah, though, as the pair created parenting advice videos for viewers across the country. Our whole life's goal is to make our kids happy, and most of the time we're trying to make our kids happy, what we're actually doing is being in distortion and inviting them into a controlling dynamic. Frankie was also behind the now-defunct Eight Passengers YouTube channel that once had more than two million subscribers. It's now been deactivated. Eve has been amazingly well behaved for being in town. Why for you like... yelled at me? <laughs> Shh! The fact that I yell at my kids is a secret. We don't want our viewers to know. When first responders arrived to the scene near Hildebrandt's home last week, they found Frankie's 12 year old son emaciated with duct tape around his wrists and ankles. This kid is obviously been. I think he's been, he's been detained, he's been, he's obviously covered in wounds. I mean, we need the cops here as soon as possible. While investigating a nearby home, officials found additional children in the same condition. Four children were taken to the Department of Child and Family Services, and both Frankie and Hildebrandt were taken into custody, eventually charged with six counts of aggravated child abuse. Hey, 314, the uh, wounds on his leg are pretty, pretty good. 12X511, 314, medical is going to transport him so that his wounds are in need of immediate care. But this isn't the first time Ruby Frankie's name has made headlines, specifically around alleged child abuse. In 2020, the mother of six posted a video to her YouTube page titled, What We Haven't Told You. In the video, she explained her teenage son, Chad, had been sleeping on a beanbag for months. I've been sleeping on a beanbag. I've been sleeping on a beanbag since <laughs> October. And they gave my broom back like two weeks ago. During the video, Frankie had her son explain why the privilege of a bedroom was taken away. Oh, I'll give you the reason why I lost my bedroom. I think so. I think this is the reason. At least this is the reason that's been in my head. It's pretty funny, but now that I look back, I mean, it's pretty depressing. No, we never told our viewers. That I woke Russell up at 2 in the morning and told him that we're going to Disneyland and he has to pack. <laughs> and he got up and made his bed all neatly and then packed all his clothes in a suitcase. And then he walked out the door and I'm like, Russell, and he's like, what? And he's all happy. Has his sunglasses on. Chad goes on to explain he told his brother it was a joke before pulling another prank on him. I was like, we're not going to Disneyland. <laughs> he started crying and hitting me. And then he went back to bed in tears and then... Uh, so that, that was that was not <laughs> the reason you lost your room, but that was... Well, the other reason is because I pointed a BB gun at his face. Pointed a BB gun at his face and hung him on the basketball. <laughs> 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 Frankie then stepped in explaining why she felt her decision to take away her son's bedroom was justified. Chad showed that he was not able to manage himself sharing a bedroom with Russell. So when we moved, um, the bigger room in the basement was automatically his and I didn't have a room, but we like put one on hold for me. So a lot of you are like, hey, that's not 
fair because Chad got the bigger, the lesser bedroom and Russell got the, the bigger bedroom. bedroom. <laughs> Russell got the big bedroom and Chad got the, the smaller bedroom smaller. and Russell's bigger bedroom also had a bathroom. But what you guys didn't know was <laughs> Chad didn't get any room. Mm -hmm. He didn't, he didn't get anything. He was sleeping on the floor in the family room and he just got the bedroom back and it's because he's shown up consistently without bullying the kids. Throughout this same video, Frankie boasts that many of her children have been without their cell phones for months. Chad hasn't had a flip phone, a smartphone, any kind of phone, and it's been over a year. Mm -hmm. And um, I still have no intention of returning a phone. Abby, we took the phone away from Abby um, November. in November. And, I mean, I and you why. may you may never get the phone back. Probably not. Frankie then tells viewers this choice affects her just as much as it affects her children. When you make these choices with your family to take things away, as a parent, you really do want them to have these things. And it's been so, so, so difficult to take a phone away, to take a bedroom away, to take iPads away, to take access away. Like, it hurts me just as much as it hurts my kids. Throughout the video though, multiple of the children describe being lonely without any friends. And now I have no friends. You can play with friends. No, like I don't have friends. I don't have friends either. I literally like told my friends I'm not hanging out with them anymore. Because, because they're really they say some pretty people. messed up stuff. I've noticed that you've been hiding from me and you are feeling a lot of embarrassment and shame. I don't know. You tell me what you're feeling. Mad. Mad. Because I really won't get anything this summer. I won't be able to go anywhere. No, I don't have any friends. The video ends as Frankie kisses her son, who's visibly upset. And I love you with all my heart. In a separate video, Frankie explains her then six-year-old daughter, Eve, forgot to bring her lunch to school. I just got a text message uh, from Eve's teacher, and she said that Eve did not pack a lunch today, and can I bring a lunch over to the school? This happens quite often when you're having raising children. She then tells viewers her daughter's teacher was uncomfortable that Eve may have no lunch that day. I know that her teacher is uncomfortable with her being hungry and not having a lunch. And it would ease her discomfort if I came to the school with a lunch. Um, but I, I responded and just said, Eve is responsible for making her lunches in the morning. And she actually told me she did pack a lunch. Instead of bringing Eve's lunch to school, Frankie says she hopes her daughter goes hungry. So the natural outcome is she's just going to need to be hungry. And hopefully, hopefully nobody gives her food and nobody steps in and gives her a lunch. On other occasions, Frankie posted videos about withholding food as well. And my kids are literally starving. I hesitate to say this because it's going to sound like I'm like a mean barbarian. But I told the kids, I said, I'm not even going to let you eat breakfast until you get your chores done. After these videos were posted, a change.org petition was created by viewers hoping to send child protective services to the Frankie family home. Nearly 18,000 people signed the petition, but the case was closed, citing insufficient evidence. After that, both Frankie and her husband, Kevin, spoke to Insider about this incident. Frankie told reporters, quote, it was just so malicious. They knew what they were doing was out of context. They were purely seeking to throw hate. That was their only objective. She addressed similar criticism in one of her videos. Online who hate me, who would like to cancel me, who would like to see me um, either burn in hell, as I have told, or um, disappear off the face of the earth. And I'm not going anywhere. Both Frankie and Hildebrand now face six charges of aggravated child abuse. If convicted, they could face upwards of 15 years in prison and a $10,000 fine per each of those charges. Reporting for Long Crime Network, I'm Sierra Gillespie.